hundred hours from the Gambia Radio and Television Services with me, Fatima Tassisei, and in our top stories, members of the Gambia Police Force conclude training in fingerprint lifting skills in crime scene management. And the residents of Kian Keneba embark on an initiative to restore the community's lost vegetation. And elsewhere, Libyan Army General Halifa Haftar threatens to march on Tripoli, sparking anxiety in the capital city. And a Chinese medical ship docks in Angola ahead of an eight-day medical surgeon in the country. Will these plus order stories will come up in just a moment. Please stay tuned. And the members of the National Assembly in the West Coast region have concluded their tour of institutions in the vast region. The team held discussions with stakeholders during their visits and Aladdin Bay tells us more. Assembly members representing constituencies within the West Coast region visited the Regional Forestry Office, the Kama Area Council and the Regional Education Directorate on the second day of their familiarization tour of regional institutions within the West Coast region. Honorable Sekhidar Jaji is the member for Busundara constituency. I want people to correctly define why we are out. This is West Coast National Assembly Caucus. Non-partisan. We are here to assess, meet our people, familiarize ourselves, so we cannot represent our people if we don't know what we need. And then I know when things happen in our societies, people do come to us. So we have to familiarize ourselves with offices, relevant offices that are there to solve the people's problem. That's why we took it on ourselves, we put the party in our side, we come together. One, uh, second part is it? Gambia is one, one nation, one people. We forget about party issue, it's now development. We come together, see that Gambia is peaceful. We cannot maintain our peace, continue the, the peace we have when we are not together. The regional forestry officer, Usaini Cham, cited lack of funding, capacity building, and misuse of forest resources as some of the challenges his institution is faced with. The regional education director, Omar Jada, called for the need to have reserve lands for the building and expansion of schools while lamenting the poor working condition of ancillary staff. The CEO, Birkama Area Council, Mamset Jalo, lamented on February with policies that he said resulted to low revenue collection for the council. The government just looks at whatever they want to pay. They just pay that, be it $10, be it $100. That's not proper. And that's why, that is why the council has been struggling over the years. And by extension, the grants that are very clear in the local government act, and they are in three. There are three, three in number, which have never been paid since the enactment of the, uh, the, the local government act. Not a single budu has been paid from government, right, for the past 20, uh, two decades. Shortly after the tour, the member for the Kama South, Marie explained that the team will make consultations with the relevant authorities on some of the concerns raised. We are national assembly members. We have three primary functions which are very key. One is the legislative functions, the two is the oversight, and the, the third is the representative uh, function. Uh, this institution has uh, a gap with regards to policy, and our number one function is to formulate policy. So therefore, we can even uh, come together, come up with a private member bill, uh, so as to uh, help them in order to uh, make sure that state policies are designed in order to uh, support their operations, which is very, very key. And the Gambia Police Force recently concluded a five-day training in fingerprint lifting skills in crime scene management. The training was conducted by a team from the Spanish National Police Force. We have details in this report. Training brought together 20 participants from different departments to be trained in fingerprint lifting skills. Speaking at the opening ceremony, the Commissioner of Policy and Coordinator of Gambia Police Force, Ibrahim Abba, said the training will enhance the participants' knowledge of their work. He noted that the participants have been given the necessary training by the Spanish. 
adding that they will help in facilitating the investigational process in the country. This cleaning would have not come at a very opportune time where the need for forensic is very, very overwhelming in the facilitation of our investigation processes. The conduct of this training is very, very important. It would have been very expensive if we want to send all of you to Spain to do the training, but the command deemed it necessary to import judicious passes. Ba pointed out that this is a modern policy that every police organization requires and urged the participants to share the skills and experience in their various departments. The Spanish trainer Blanco said criminality in general is globalized, therefore working together to stop the situation is their target. He advised participants to be more skillful to improve their competency. The problems in Gambia are the same problems than, than in Spain. If you suffer the terrorism, if you suffer the irregular immigration, or if you suffer the consequences of the organized crime, and we have to work together to destroy these bad situations. A participant in Sajame pointed out that the training has enlightened them to be more skillful and brought more understanding of their work. He thanked the Spanish embassy for the gesture and promised on behalf of his colleagues to improve the Gambia police force. Working materials were given to the participants and certificates of appreciation from the Spanish National Police. Reporting for GRTS News, I am Kadija Tujuara. And I will say the National Nutrition Agency and partners have ended a day-long convergence in the Open River region. And as I said to Katie tells us, the gathering was meant to give them the platform to pave the way for the successful implementation of the project. We have gathered for a day-long conclave to consult and discuss about the implementation of the BREAST project and progress made thus far. This project dubbed Building Resilience Through Social Transfers for Nutrition Security in the Gambia aims to simultaneously address acute malnutrition and resilience building strategies through cash transfers. Since we have met our target, efforts should be made to ensure that communities are fully sensitized about the project in order to realize maximum benefit. This is only possible when there is a provision for the procurement of an air tank. Funded by the European Union through UNICEF, the project, which is set to last for two years, targets over 5,000 lactating mothers in the North Bank, Central River and Upper River regions, who will be receiving monthly cash transfers and comprehensive nutrition education. As far as the progress in implementation is concerned, I think it's a thumbs up. The project has done an amazing job within a short space of time, and that is acknowledged. The day-long convergence availed implementers the opportunity to take stock of the past, share best practices whilst identifying gaps, so as to pave way for the successful implementation of the project. In improving the quality of life of people, in improving the national status, improving their health status, and building their resilience for any such or eventuality, so that they can be full secure and full sustained. Yes, six on that is small. It's good to you and I. But the beneficiaries, it's like a multi salary for them. It makes a big impact on their life. What we need to do now is to ensure that we focus on so that we have chain communication. So that all the good behavior that we are promoting. Are by these this models? Are part by these models to improve the welfare of their children? As they leave the confines of the room to their various destinations, discussions and recommendations that emanated will act as a springboard for the improvement of the well being of children and their mothers. For GHS News, I am Isa Dukaita. And from URR to LRR, where the Kenaba Youth Association Saturday embarked on a massive mangrove planting exercise 
on the swampy lands of the outskirts of the community. And the move, supported by the Department of Forestry, was meant to restore the vegetation cover and enable productive livelihood ventures in the area. Ibrahim Jalla was in Kien and sent in the support. The youths were determined to regenerate the lost mangrove plants on the very vast wetland area. They cited significant decline in rice production and other livelihood activities due to the disappearance of mangrove plants over the years. I witnessed the time this environment was green, and I also witnessed the time this environment was empty. We are farmers, trees promote rainfall, without which our farming will be affected. Natives of Kenneba, including those residing in the urban area, convert for environmental work. They work up with the realities of climate change, desertification and the need to plant more trees to protect the environment. Sherman okay. Gay, head of participatory forest management unit, Department of Forestry, welcomed the move undertaken by the association. He said this was in line with his department's tree planting initiative. It's important in the sense that, uh, of course, uh, restoring the mangrove means you are, you know, helping build the, the habitat of the marine ecosystem. Uh, that's our fish species and other marine species. So it's also very important. It also, it also has some impact on, you know, the uh, rice cultivation. Here is a successful story of the community's previous tree planting exercises in the community forest. These were seedlings planted three years ago. They are now grown up and filling gaps in the forest thanks to the commitment of the youths. We protect our forest from fire, but we need more tools to help us protect the forest. They started this uh, three, four years ago, and as you can see, they are not only into protecting it against fire, but they are also into restoration. You can see all these malinas were planted by the communities. And uh, there's proof to show that there was no fire since they started managing this place. I think that is, that is very important. The Kereba youths are calling on other community associations to emulate their initiative to ensure a sustainable effort in protecting the environment. Ibrahim Jalo, GRTS News. And still on efforts to replenish the environment, the Rotary Club of Banjul and Partners marked World Work Day. The exercise saw participants plant coconut trees at the beachfront. Mudibajan reports. Leading the tree planting exercise, King of the Gambias, a Yoruba community, and President Rotary Club of Banjul, Al Haji Kabiyase Abolade Mosud, and other Rotarians underlined the significance of the activity. We know the plant of tree in our midst, in our environment, so we decide to plant coconut tree that has uh, many values. It has an uh, economic value, it has a cultural value, and it's also a food for human being. For years, if you look around, our environment has been damaged by the cutting of trees, and then people don't plant again. Once you take a plant, when it can't expire, you should plant more to replace it. We are prone to a uh, climate disaster if we do not take action now. This initiative was spearheaded by our Rotary president, Ian Riceley, uh, from Australia. Um, he is the president for 2017-2018. One of his goals was to curb to curb climate change. And in curbing climate change, uh, one of the ways to do it properly is by planting trees. Uh, that will help the environment. With Rotary International's increased tree planting endeavors, Rotarians further record the essentiality of trees in environmental as well as socio-economic development. They include past assistant Governor Safiyon Mani and Banking Jai of the Rotary Club of Bijelu, which is currently in the making. Uh, Rotary is, is about action, and doing what we have done today shows that we are action-oriented. When we say something, we do it. And not only do we, we also want to make sure that whatever we put uh, today uh, on the ground, we make sure that the people that have uh, uh, promised that they will take care of it, we will pay a uh, periodical uh, visit to them. Wake up early morning to come today to join hands together to, to plant trees in itself, I think is just showing our own 
um, effort in trying to protect the climate. Um, I think climate change is up upon us, and um, we're seeing it every day. And uh, we see what erosion is doing to our to our um, our environment. And I think planting a tree, if each Rotarian plant a tree, I think that in itself um, um, something lo laudable. While calling on Gambians to be involved in the fight against environmental degradation and climate change at large, Abdullah Jal underscored the need to better Gambian tourism through such beach protection activities. The engagement was not limited to Rotary Club members, as Habib Mai. A prospective Rotarian also endorsed the club's tree propagation initiatives. He described it as a must-do to safeguard the country's rapidly diminishing forest cover. As the Gambia largely loses its forest cover to timber, fuel wood and other demands, this and similar tree planting interventions may hopefully enhance its sustenance. Modo Bajan, GRTS. And coming up next is News and Sports right after this break. Do stay with us. Welcome back and let's head to Tunisia where Club African Day is all set for their CAF Confederation Cup semi-final and the second leg against South Africa's Super Sport United CGTNs at Benhwashi looks ahead of the Continental North African Derby. Club Africa is preparing to host South Africa Super Sport United in the return match of CAF Confederation Cup semi-final. Our generation has not yet tasted Africa's prestigious titles. We must score the first goal on Sunday. After a one-to-one -one result in the first leg, the Tunisian outfit is confident they can reach the final. We've observed our opponents. The South Africans have a strong team, but we are determined to win. This has been our dream since 2011. 2011, Club Africa lost the final on penalties to Morocco's Maghreb <coughs> Dufes. After a six year of absence, the club is eager for a return to the final. Matthew Rosic has not played an official match for four months. He's not 100% ready to play for 90 minutes. He can play from about 60 to 70 minutes. We will rely on Rosic and his teammates. Head coach Marco Simone is waiting for the physical trainer's green light to include the Zimbabwean midfielder and striker Matthew Rosic in the team. On one side, hundreds of South Africans flew out to Tunisia to support their club, Super Sport United. On the other side, at least 40,000 Tunisian fans will attend the Sunday game at Rada Stadium for one of Africa's top clashes of the football season. Adam Shirochi, CGTN, Tunis. And that takes us to another break. What do you about with more international stories? Please stay tuned. Welcome back and the Libyan National Army Chief General Khalifa Haftar has threatened to take over Tripoli with the announcement this caused tension in Libya which is already ravaged by war and some analysts assert that Haftar will attack Tripoli at any time while others doubt his intention to take the city. The Army General's declaration has had a negative impact on the UN sponsored talks and security in Tripoli. General Khalifa Haftar is Libya's most powerful military figure. Haftar revealed his plan to send his armed forces into Tripoli. The announcement is viewed by experts in Libyan affairs as a new declaration of war that will lead to an escalation of the armed conflict. General Haftar has convinced tribal leaders and militias in the West to join his forces. He defeated some Islamist groups in Sobrata. His forces are advancing to take Zawiya, which is located 45 kilometers west of Tripoli. The human cost for fighting in Tripoli will be heavy. An urgent political situation is the only way out. Some experts in Libyan affairs argue that General Haftar is planning threatening to take Tripoli. 
to put pressure on all living parties and stakeholders to sit at the negotiating table. General Haftar's army is well equipped and trained. However, his announcement is just meant for the media. It's a kind of propaganda. He will not attack Tripoli. This scenario would have devastating results for Libya. Several UN sponsored meetings on Libya were held in Tunis. Libyan delegations were unable to build consensus. Nevertheless, Hassan Salam, the UN envoy to Libya, addressed a message on Friday to Libyans in the South in order to ease tension. I congratulate Libyans in the South for insisting on Libya's unity. Your demands and arguments were balanced during the negotiations to amend the political agreement. General Haftar's warning that his forces would enter Tripoli has made the already unstable security situation even worse in the northwestern city. The eighth article of the 2015 Skirat Agreement that outlined the authorities of the Libyan Army Chief Commander constituted a major disagreement during the UN sponsored talks in Skirat and Tunis. Analysts say all Libyans must make concessions to turn the page on years of war. And elsewhere, the Chinese Navy hospital ship at peace is docked in Angola. And this is ahead of an eight-day goodwill visit to provide medical service to those critically ill and Lacey Mirungo is born. The welcoming ceremony was held in the Angolan city of Rwanda. <laughs> It was attended by a number of dignitaries from China and Angola, as well as representatives of Chinese funded enterprises in the country. After the ceremony, representatives from Angola were taken on a tour of the hospital ship Ark Peace. We are very thankful to the Chinese Navy for coming to Angola to bring the much needed services here. We have felt the warmth from our motherland. In the meantime, we wish our motherland prosperity even as the 19th National Congress of the Communist Party of China is going on. The visit is part of a campaign dubbed Mission Harmony 2017. Our PC staff will provide diagnosis and treatment for the patients coming aboard the hospital ship. Medical experts will also visit the Angola Military Technology Academy for medical exchange. That's ahead of a planned soccer match between Angolan and Chinese teams. The visit has been widely seen as a means to deepen ties between the two countries that started back in 1983. To date, four batches of Chinese medical teams have been sent to Angola to help conduct medical camps to those in need. That brings an end to this edition of the News 10. But before we go, a recap of the top stories uh, once again. The members of the Gambia Police Force have concluded training in fingerprint lifting skills and crime scene management. And residents of Kian Kenaba have embarked on an initiative to restore the community's lost vegetation. And elsewhere, Libyan Army General Khalifa Haftar has threatened to march on Tripoli, sparking anxiety in the capital city. And a Chinese medical ship is docked in Angola ahead of an eight-day medical surgeon in the country. And that was all in this edition of the News at 10 with me, Fatwa Tassi Thank you for joining us and keep watching KRTS.